Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over uh, Steam configuration controller settings and what you should be using. And uh, later on in the video I'm going to go into uh, my settings in game and uh, what I think is viable and what you guys should be, or what ranges you guys should be using for the settings. Uh, so recently Steam had an update to the uh, controller layout here and they kind of changed the UI around so I figured it'd be a good time to make a video and show you what you guys should be using for that. Um, before we get into that though, just some settings that you should probably look at. Um, try going to your library and go to home, right click on Rocket League, then go to properties, controller, and then make sure you're using uh, use default settings because we're going to be turning on PlayStation configuration support and you need to be using use default settings before you can uh, turn turn on that. So now we're going to go turn on PlayStation configuration support. So go to Steam, settings, controller, general controller settings, and then uh, make sure uh, whatever controller you're using, you click whatever configuration support that coincides with that. So for me, I'm using PlayStation, so I'm going to click this box. If you're going to use Xbox, use this one. If you're going to use Switch, use this one. And uh, one thing to double check, once you have that clicked, uh, click on uh, Detected Controllers, and then go to Calibrate, and make sure your dead zones are set in Steam to uh, this tick here. I've tried messing around with it, um, having it all the way down, and personally it felt faster, but I felt a lot less consistent with my mechanics, so personally I would recommend uh, leaving the slider at the default setting. Alright, so next thing we're going to check in Steam is the controller layout. So this is what's new with the recent update. This used to be all blue and then you'd see the controller and you could change the layout and what configurations you want and that sort of thing. But for the current layout, make sure you have uh, the official layout, legacy official psionics bindings. It should be in here and if not, um, maybe you could search through here and try to find it. Um, and then one other thing that I would check in here is go to Edit Layout, go to your joysticks, and then we're going to want to look at L3 or our left joystick, and then click on Settings here. And I'll just show you what I have. I just use the defaults for these, and then so just pause the video and look through these. And then this one is where we're going to have some changes, but I'll just will show you these ones quick. So by default, this is set to none, like this. So what you want to do is you want to go to Custom and make sure that this is set like this and you're using the cross dead zone shape. You can also use square or circle if you really want to, but personally I recommend cross as most of the high level players and pros use cross. Some use square. Um, I don't really know of a whole lot that use circle. I know in the previous update with Steam, for me specifically, mine was set to circle by default. And once I switched over to cross, it definitely, I felt a lot faster and more consistent versus using the circle dead zone. So personally, I'd recommend cross. Um, it's definitely going to change up how your car feels and how reads go, so um, give it a little bit, maybe switch it to cross and try it out for a week, but it's definitely going to take some time in order to get to that same level of consistency that you had if you were on one of these other dead zones. Alright, um, before we get into all my in-game settings, one little tip that I'd like to share with you guys, if you press Control shift escape you can open up your task manager and if you go to details it'll show all the processes that are currently running on your computer but we're gonna try to find the Rocket League process here if you right click it and go to set priority uh, by default it's gonna be set to normal you're gonna wanna set that to high and what that's gonna do is all these other processes are going to have a lower priority than Rocket League. So an example is for me personally, I use Discord a lot or like I watch YouTube sometimes and having Rocket League set to a higher priority over those other applications allow uh, to have more consistent frames. So if like all of a sudden like Discord's like, oh, I need to utilize more of your processor because I have this thing going on, Rocket League's going to be like, no, I have a higher priority. You're going to have to wait. So 
uh, it should help with uh, your frame rate and uh, input latency in general. So now I'm going to go over all my in-game settings. So the first thing, gameplay. Um, the most, I'd say the most important one in here is the uh, limited boost, uh, limited boost in free play. So what that allows you to do is like if you're just chilling in free play, if you want a limited boost or not. Um, if you're having issues with the boost management, uh, one sec. If you're having issues with boost management, one thing I'd recommend doing is just turning off a limited boost in free play and just driving around and focusing on uh, getting the pads and pennies and just like going around and doing like your free play, uh, free play training as normal so like taking it up the wall, doing flip resets and that sort of thing and then just focusing on uh, getting the pads, going through the boost lanes. Um, another thing you can do is you can keep ball cam on and just focus on driving around and getting pennies and just doing the same sort of thing, just driving around, getting boost pads. Alright, so next thing I'd look at in here is uh, client server send rate settings and I mean I haven't really had much luck with this in the past when I had bad internet but um, if you're having potential internet issues you can try changing uh, the buffer, the input buffer, and try messing around with these settings and maybe maybe do help in your situation. Um, so for next thing, this is probably one of the more important tabs here, camera settings. Uh, never have camera shake turned on because every time you touch the ball, it's gonna shake your camera. And it's just gonna just make everything a lot more difficult, especially like if you're dribbling and trying to do flicks and stuff. You're flipping the camera shaking it's just not not really a very helpful setting so just make sure you have that turned off so for field field of view this determines like how wide you can see and how much information you can get on the pitch so if i have fov turned all the way down you can see that uh it's really close to my car and the amount of information i can gather and see on the field is very limited so I'd recommend having this turned up as high as possible, and I probably wouldn't go past like 108 on the low end. Distance is somewhat similar to FOV, not exactly. It just determines how far away the camera is for your car. So if I turn it all the way up, you can see that the camera is really far away from my car, and it's, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get concise uh specific touches on the ball because of how far away the camera is and same thing for if you like really crank it in now it's just really zoomed in and it's i can get way more accurate touches but my ability to kind of see what's going on around me is going to be severely limited so personally i'd recommend anywhere from between like 260 to 280 but I personally use right in the middle of that 270. Height just determines how high the camera is on your car. So um, most people use between about 90 and 110. Personally, I use right in the middle of that. And like the higher you go, it's gonna be harder to get touches and it's just gonna look really awkward. And it's gonna be hard to get like really mechanical touches and certain things with like having your camera really high so personally I'd stay right around between 90 and 110 just kind of mess around with it and see what you like. Next is the angle it's going to determine the angle of the camera in relation to your car so um, the range that most people use is between negative 3 and negative 5 personally I use negative 4 right in the middle of that um, changing up the angle is going to change how certain like how the reads look on your camera and how like it doesn't change it just kind of changes the perspective of like where your car needs to be on the ball in order to get powerful touches so personally i'd recommend you stay within that range and i would try out negative four personally but you just got to use mess around with it see what you like 
for the next setting stiffness this is going to determine how stiff the camera follows you so um, if I leave it as what I have now, if I'm not moving, it's going to be slightly closer to me. As, as I get up to supersonic, the camera is going to be slightly further away from me. So if you have this cranked all the way up, it's going to be really like tight and locked in on your car and it's not going to be moving at all. And then uh, if you have it all the way down, it's going to be really loose and the camera is going to move a around a lot. It's going to be really loose. Personally, um, I think between 0.35 and 0.7 is a good range to mess around in, but I use 0.4. Uh, swivel speed, that's going to determine uh, basically how fast uh, the camera moves when you use the right joystick to look around. Um, the higher you have it, the faster it's going to be. So if I crank this all the way up, it's going to be moving a lot faster. It's going to be kind of hard to keep track of everything because of how fast it's moving. And then if I crank it all the way down, it's going to go a lot slower. And personally, I use right in the middle of that at 0.5. Um, transition speed, this is basically going to determine how fast you switch between car cam and ball cam. So if I crank it all the way up and then switch, it's basically instant. And then if I uh, put it all the way down, it's gonna be a lot slower from that transition. And I use about 1.2. Some people like it a little faster. Something I've noticed though, it's kind of weird just from like playing the game a lot. If you use a lower height, you want to have a higher transition speed because I'll show you what my settings look like normally if I'm just like driving around doing my thing right. Let's take it up the wall and see if we can be a good example. So like you can see everything's moving around and it seems fine, right? And then if I switch to like 90, I don't know, for, for me personally it just feels like it's too slow for certain things. And then having it slightly higher with a lower height seems to help me personally. But that's just going back to personal preference and like messing around with things and seeing what you like. All right, so for controls, we'll go over senses. I used to use 1.3 to like 1.5 for my steering and aerial. And recently I've tried cranking it up to 1.4 seems to be a little bit quicker and I kind of like it so this is more like a personal preference thing so just kind of experiment with experiment with it and see what you like um, so for controller dead zone I use 0.05 basically what this does it, it determines how far you move your analog stick before your input is detected um, if you set it all the way down and you have like a bad stick then you're going to get some stick drift. So for me, if I have it all the way down, you can see that my my uh, car is like slightly steering to the right here. That's because if I have it all the way down, then I'm getting some drift here. Um, um, so personally, I'd stick at 0.05. If you have like a really good controller, you could go lower. Um, yeah, so I'd personally stick to around 0.5. Um, 0.05. For dodge dead zone, this is going to determine how far uh, you have to move your stick before a dodge is detected. So what this is useful for is for like fast aerialing. So like if you move your stick up and then go to flip again, if you have it set higher, there's going to be less likely of a chance that you're going to backflip. So um, ranges that I'd recommend is between like 0.5 and 0.8. Um, 0.5 feels pretty speedy in my opinion, but personally I feel like I have issues with consistency and I don't know. You know, it's one of those things where like just you gotta mess around with it, see what you like, like most of these settings, but those are the ranges I'd recommend.
All right, and then for interface, it's kind of, th this is all personal preference really, like you can just make the interface a little bigger or smaller, it's up to you. But one thing I would change is the nameplate scale. I'd set this to at least 150, and what that's gonna do is just gonna make uh, the, the gamer tags or the nameplates uh, on top of your opponent's car is bigger. So let's say I have like an opponent in that there, and I'm like hiding behind the ball if my nameplate scale is too tiny. I, I can just sit back here and he won't even know that I'm behind the ball, but if you have that nameplate scale higher, you'll be able to see their nameplate at least, and at least know that they're in that general area or they're hiding behind the ball. Um, um, personally, I have some of these indicators off. Um, most of these aren't too important. I would recommend uh, having uh, the ball ball cam arrow on or the ball arrow. So like what this is going to do is when you turn off uh, when you turn off uh, ball cam, it's still going to at least have an arrow pointing to where the ball is. And also, uh, I don't know, it just helps with awareness. Like So that way, even if you aren't looking at the ball at the, at specifically, you at least kind of know the general vicinity or where the ball is. Um, other than that, I mean, if you want, you can use some of the performance graph stuff. It's just going to give you information about your FPS or like your network performance and other, other stuff like that. And then for video settings, personally, I try to have everything as low as possible so that way I can increase my frames. Um, so if you want to get this set to low as fast as possible, just go to performance and then the only things you have to tick are uh, texture detail, set that to high performance and make sure effect intensity is on low. And then for one thing you do want on is transparent goal posts. So what that's going to allow is if you're in the goal, you'll be able to see the opponents or the ball if they're in the corners. So this gives you more information. So I would recommend keeping that on. And then uh, for your frames per second, choose whatever you can get, like the highest one that you can get consistently. Personally, if your PC can handle it, I'd recommend 360. Personally, my computer can run at 360, but I get dips in frames every once in a while, so it causes like hitching and stuttering in my games, especially if I'm recording for YouTube and stuff. So in order to get the most consistent experience, I personally have it set at 240. But the higher the better, it just depends on your PC. Um, I'm going to be upgrading my PC pretty soon here, so that way I can uh, start having my frame set a little higher, so that way I can have slightly uh, improved input latency and just overall better frames, and then I can also have that improved uh, frames while recording as well. Um, and the last thing, audio. Mostly this is all personal preference. You can kind of mess with this and do it however you want. Nothing really like too competitively viable that's really going to give you advantage. At least like have like, at least be able to hear like your opponents so that way you know if they're coming up behind you for a demo you can hear it before they hit you. Um, that's the only note I really have on that and chat. This is the new voice chat feature. Um, I mean, if you like talking with people you can have this turned on doesn't really matter. That's all the settings that I wanted to go over for today. If you found any of the information in this video helpful, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.